I still remember when I first met Paul. He was such a great guy, and we hit it off immediately. I was young then in my early 20s, so I think it was easier to fall hard for him. It only took us a month to decide to move in together. It seemed like the perfect relationship. Of course, my friends all told me that we were moving too fast and that I should take more time to get to know him, but I didn't want to listen. If only I had. It didn't take long for everything to go bad. Paul started out so kind and understanding, but somehow after we started dating seriously, he completely changed. He became totally psychotic and controlling. At first it was smaller things. He would always decide what we were going to do and would never listen to any of my suggestions. But then he became crazy jealous too. It wouldn't even be stuff that I did either. Paul would practically go on a rampage anytime another guy even glanced in my direction. Sometimes I would have to stop him from attacking some random guy in a bar just because he thought the guy was staring at him. If I tried to talk about it, he would tell me it was my fault and that I was asking for attention. It was absolutely ridiculous. It was the worst when I went somewhere without him. Paul would snap and accuse me of cheating if I didn't call or message him even if I was just out with friends or at my family's house. He was really scary when he was mad too. Sometimes I was even afraid that he would actually attack me. He became so jealous that it was incredibly difficult to do anything apart from him. Then, one night, on Valentine's Day, my friends invited me for a girls' night out to celebrate a friend's birthday. I didn't know what I should do at first, since it was Valentine's Day. But Paul and I hadn't really made any plans, and he was still at work. I finally decided to go out with my friends and deal with Paul being upset later. I really wanted some time away from him anyway. I made sure to text Paul that I was going out, and then I tried to put him out of my mind for the night. I just wanted to have some fun with my friends for once without him ruining everything. Of course, that wasn't going to happen though. Throughout the night, while my friends and I were at a bar, Paul texted me nonstop. When I didn't respond, he started completely freaking out and yelling at me. Where are you? I know you're cheating on me, you bitch! I finally just decided to ignore his text completely. I knew I was going to have to deal with everything later, but I didn't want to put up with it at that moment. Then, the text turned into calls. After the first couple calls, I put my phone on Do Not Disturb. I was so tired of Paul trying to control me. I decided that I would finish out my night, but I was seriously considering breaking up with him at that point. The problem was I knew it wouldn't be easy. I tried as best as I could to have a good time with my friends, but when it was time to head home, I was scared as shit. I knew Paul was going to completely blow up at me. It was the longest I had ever gone without texting or calling him back, and I didn't know what he was going to do. My friends tried to calm me down and told me that I could grab some clothes and spend the night with them if I needed to. That seemed like a good idea to me but I still had to break up with Paul first. So my friends dropped me off in front of the house and waited for me outside while I slowly walked up to the front door. I was still scared out of my mind, but I was determined to go through with it. I couldn't keep letting Paul control my whole life. When I got to the door, I paused a second to psych myself up. I figured that I would go in and grab my clothes first, and then I would break up with Paul right before I left. I didn't want to give him any time to react. After a final deep breath, I went to open the door. As soon as I opened the door, I found Paul standing directly in the doorway. Paul? What are you- I didn't even have time to react before he grabbed me and yanked me inside, slamming the door behind me. I immediately pushed him away from me and ran to my room to grab some clothes. He was a complete psychopath. I screamed at him and told him that I didn't want to be with him anymore. But that just made him snap even more. He started breaking things and punching holes in the walls while he screamed at me. Ah! 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 You're not gonna get away with this! You can't leave me! I won't let you! He was acting so scary, but I was so fed up with him. I started cussing at him and telling him that it was all his fault. But that just made him go even more berserk. He was going so crazy that I actually thought he might try to kill me. And I was scared shitless. I ran out of the house and jumped into my friend's car as I heard shouting still coming from inside. Ah! I screamed at my friend to get the hell out of there and she started pulling out of the driveway as fast as she could. Just as I thought I was safe, Paul came running like a bat out of hell and jumped onto the car. He started hacking at the car with a knife. He had completely lost his mind. He was stabbing like a maniac. His knife punctured the roof and hit the doors. He was trying everything he could to get at us. My friend tried to swerve and shake him off, but he wouldn't let go. This story was inspired by a deadly Valentine's Day incident that happened in 2011. 
A breakup between a man named Gibson Paul and his then-girlfriend Tomika Peterson happened on that Valentine's evening. Peterson left the apartment she shared with Paul and got into a car with her friends after the ordeal. Paul then snapped and armed himself, letting off at a vehicle which contained Peterson and three other individuals. All victims survived except for Peterson. Paul acted as his own attorney for the start of the trial, later requesting a public defender. Paul was sentenced to life in prison. Hey, how's the punch? I don't know. It, it tastes a little weird. Maybe someone spiked it. Ugh, I wouldn't be surprised. Every single creep and his inbred cousin came out tonight. <laughs> I know, right? This place is a total sausage fest. I guess all the other couples had the right idea not to come. Happy Valentine's, baby! Why don't you come dance with a real man? Don't touch me. Hey, back off, buttface. She doesn't want to dance with you. <laughs> you ever dance with two men at once? I bet she does more than just dance with two men at once. <laughs> Ew, get away from me, you creeps. <gasps> Let's get the hell out of here. I knew we never should have come to this stupid dance. I know, I know. But we're leaving now. No more of those creeps. Yeah. Look, I'm sorry about all that. I had no idea the dance was going to be such a bust. It's fine. It's not your fault other people can't control themselves. I just wish you would have punched him in the face before he had the chance to touch me. Yeah, me too. I swear I will if he tries that again. You better. Come to my car. Let's get out of here, okay? Okay. Where do you want to go? Anywhere but here. Look stressed. Do you want to make out or anything? No, no. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. How about head m massage? Like, like a head massage? Dude, I just need to relax for a few minutes, okay? Forget about that stupid dance. I agree. I just hope your pump pump. I, I, I mean, prom is better than that. <laughs> I don't even think I'm gonna go to prom if it's anything like what I just went through. Come on, you're gonna make me dance by myself. Hey, uh, where are you taking us? You know, that one spot I was telling you about. The one where you can see the whole city? Oh, it's about time you took me there. It better live up to my expectations. I'm sure it will. I'm honestly surprised more people don't know about it. It's closer than you'd think. In fact, we're already here. Really? Whoa, it's beautiful. I told you. We can see everybody from here, but nobody can see us. <laughs> What do you mean by that? Well, you know, the spot is very secluded and, uh, good for private things. Come on, really? Right after what happened with that pig? Hey, I I'm not like that guy. I'm just asking if you want to. I I've never done this before and neither have you, so... So what? Well, it's Valentine's Day and we've been together for a while and now here it's just you and me. I, I can't imagine a much better story for our first time. I, I want it to be special. That would be nice, wouldn't it? To be honest, it wasn't in my plans for the night, but um, maybe we could. Really? Wait, what the hell? Um, who's that? I thought you said we'd be alone out here. Because I thought we would be. I don't have a clue who this is. He's got his damn brights on. Maybe we should just get out of here. We can't. He blocked us in. There's no way I could turn around. What's he doing? I can't tell. Wait, he's getting out. Wait, what? Why? I don't know. Maybe he wants to say something. Screw that. Just turn on the car and let's get out of here. I don't care if you have to make a 30-point turn and drive through the bushes. Okay, okay. Oh, God damn it. Not now. Come on. Hurry. Hurry. What the? Where did he go? I don't know. <laughs> what the hell? Where did he go? Valentine's You're Day! A psycho. <laughs> Help me! Help me! Help! <laughs> it's been three days since high school senior Carla Walker went missing after her boyfriend was left with severe head trauma. This morning, the body of a young female was found in the ditch directly behind me. Just moments ago, the medical examiner confirmed the worst. At this time, the police and the grieving family of Carla Walker are urgently 
In 1974, a female named Carla Walker was taken from her boyfriend's car after a Valentine's Day dance. Her boyfriend was knocked unconscious while Carla was abducted. Her body was found in a ditch three days later. Allegedly, Walker had suffered two days of torture prior to all of this. While the authorities have named persons of interest, no charges ever were made and the case went cold. In 2020, investigators were able to build a full DNA profile of the suspect using new technology. This new evidence allowed investigators to match DNA to one of their previous persons of interest, Glenn McCurley. Now 77, was officially charged and sentenced to life in prison. This happened in 2007, around Valentine's Day. I guess most relationships tend to lose their magic as people get older. I just never thought that it would happen so soon. When my husband James and I were young, we were so romantic with each other, and we'd always take the time to go out together and have fun. We had a great physical relationship too. Now it was different though. As we got older, we started working more and adding a lot more stress to our lives. And I guess we just fell out of the habit of spending time together. I couldn't remember the last time we'd been out on a date. It unfortunately ruined our intimacy too. We hadn't done anything in years. It was starting to affect me. I barely even felt like I had a husband anymore. I didn't want to cheat on him, but I had urges to. And I knew it would happen eventually if something didn't change. The problem was, we tried countless times and nothing worked. It was like my husband wasn't even attracted to me anymore. We rented tapes from an adult store and watched online movies, but they didn't help. I bought a bunch of nice lingerie to try to make myself more appealing to him, but he barely even seemed to notice. We even tried different oils and supplements, but those had no effect either. I didn't know what else to do. I often recommended that he take happy pills, but he always avoided the conversation when I brought it up. James claimed that they weren't good long term, and he didn't want to depend on them. I had begged him multiple times, but he always refused, so we continued to have the same problem, and there didn't seem to be any solution. After so long of not being together in that way, we started to have other issues too. We began to argue and fight all the time. It wasn't even always about the happy pills either. Sometimes we would fight over almost nothing at all. There was always a lot of tension between us no matter what was going on. It became so insane that we didn't even sleep in the same room anymore. Most days we barely spoke to each other. I could tell that my husband blamed me for most of it, but I think it was more just to make himself feel better. He had to feel guilty that we couldn't be intimate but he still refused to try the pills. Then, after this had been going on for some time, it began to get even worse. James seemed to be slowly losing his mind. Sometimes I would hear him snap downstairs when I was going to bed. It would be all quiet, and then I would suddenly hear him screaming and banging around. That woman ruined me! She ruined my anaconda! I hate her! It all tended to be similar to that. It seemed like he totally hated me. I didn't know what was pushing him over the edge, but it sounded like he was going completely insane. I began to be scared for my life. James continued to get worse, and I didn't fully know what he could be capable of. If he blamed me for everything that was going wrong, then what would stop him from deciding to get rid of me? I grew depressed. I considered divorcing him, but I didn't know how he would take it. It just seemed like such an extreme option. We had been happy together once. I wanted to get back to that point, but everything was so bad. I didn't know if it was possible to fix it. Then, one day I decided to take matters into my own hands. It was close to Valentine's Day, and I decided that I would discreetly purchase some happy pills myself. Then one night, I told my husband that we should try and be together one more time. I told him that I had a feeling that it would be different. James didn't seem too confident, but he reluctantly agreed. Just before I went into the bedroom, I crushed up a couple of the happy pills and roofied his wine. He had no idea what I had done, but it made all the difference. We were finally able to be together. After that night, we started enjoying life more. Our relationship began to get a lot better, and we fought way less. It seemed like solving that one issue was just what we needed to remind ourselves that we could still love each other. It really became nice. Any night that we wanted to be together, I would do the same thing and roofie his wine. It worked every time, and James had no clue what I was doing. I was so relieved that we seemed to be getting our lives back. Then, one night, it all went wrong. It was Valentine's Day, and my husband and I actually decided to celebrate it for the first time in a while. 
We went out for a fancy dinner and then returned home to be together again. I wanted it to be an extra special night, so I decided to crush up some extra happy pills to put in his wine. I just wanted to make sure that everything went really well. The only problem was, that same night, James popped a few happy pills himself in preparation for the big night ahead of him. He too was trying to make it extra special. If I had only known, things might have been different, but James wanted me to be surprised. After drinking his wine, I could immediately tell that something was wrong. He clutched at his chest and seemed to be having trouble breathing. Then, he suddenly dropped his glass, shattering it completely. Then, he fell to the floor. He wasn't moving. James! James! James died just a few minutes later. I called for help immediately, but they were too late to save him. It was revealed that James had taken a harmful dose of the happy pills, and the cops arrested me that same day for murdering my husband. I tried to explain what happened but they wouldn't listen. I spent the rest of Valentine's Day in jail. The whole time I was there, I kept wishing that I would have just told James what I had done. Everything might have turned out differently. This story was inspired by a horrific incident that happened around the Valentine's Day of 2007. In an attempt to spice up their lagging love life, the wife of a 50-year-old Italian construction worker spiked his wine with two crushed up quote-unquote happy pills. Later on, the man suffered a severe heart attack. The man was immediately transported to the hospital and miraculously survived. 